We are called U12.1 and this is our presentation. Our team consists of two members. We have Cleon, who is a primary six and is a programmer, Kendrick, who is a primary five and a builder, and myself, Benjamin, who is a primary five and a programmer. We will now talk about hardware. We are using Trax as it has the most contact area of the ground and can drive over speed bumps and ramps passing the challenge without any problems. We also had a problem with the Trax tooting in the beginning. To stop this, we added supports on the outside. We did not use wheels as there would be a big gap between the wheels and the bottom of the robot will hit the speed bump. We, we will need to use gears which are bulky and complex to use. Also, the robot has a low center of gravity and will not topple on the speed bump and ramps when the robot is tilted. This is done by making the heavy V3 as low as possible. Now, we will be talking about the forward-facing curve sensor. As you can see from the picture above, there is a forward-facing curve sensor to detect the rescue kit and obstacle on the line and that there are live victims in the evacuation zone. One of the considerations was to make sure that the height of the color sensor had to be smaller than the smallest object, which is the 3CM cube. Also, since the sensor can only detect directly in front of it, and the cube and balls may be off to the sides, we made sure that the claw was slanted, so that the items to be collected will move in front of the sensor as the robot drives forward. Next, we'll be talking about the ground-facing color sensors. There are two ground-facing color sensors that face the ground for line tracking, Green square detecting, detecting junctions, detecting the silver strip to enter the evacuation zone, detecting the black strip to exit the evacuation zone, and finally, detecting the red strip at the end of the map. One of the things we had to note when mounting those color sensors was making sure that the sensors was 1 cm above the ground to clear the speed bumps and maintain good reading. Another consideration was to make sure that the distance between them must be equal to the distance between the two green squares. We will now talk about the laser distance sensor. The laser distance sensor is placed at the side of the robot and is used to track around the obstacles in the map, and also to track the walls in the evacuation zone and detect the evacuation point. Since we do not know the size of the object on the line, we keep a fixed distance from the object and continue moving until the robot sees the line again. The laser distance sensor is able to measure the distance. We use the same code to track the walls of the evacuation zone. This is because our robot was slanting in the beginning and could not do the evacuation zone reliably. Next, we'll be talking about the grab and lift mechanism. We need this as there are two types of objects, the level 2 cubes and the victims, which need to be transported to the evacuation point and lifted above the 6 cm barrier. Since we are using EV3, which only has four motor parts, we have to use a grab and lift which can do two actions with one motor. To design the grab and lift, we got everyone to build one of their own and choose their best design in the end. While building the grab and lift, we realized that the best design had to include several pieces to have enough friction to grab both objects. Also, since the grab and lift was lifting before grabbing at the start, this meant that the claw was too tight. To solve this problem, we added two wheels to add more weight to the claw. The grab and lift mechanism explained by Kendrick will put the objects on a platform so that they can be sorted. The sorting mechanism placed on top of the robot will sort the white balls or the rescue kit to one side of the sorting channels and the black balls onto the other side. This is so that we can first deposit the live victims, then the dead victims, so that we can get the maximum points. Next, we'll be talking about the storage channels. There are two storage channels. One for the dead victims and the others for the alive victims along with the blue cube. When building, we had to make sure that the channels were, were tilting down and must work for both cubes and victims. The channel connects to pivots. Next, I will be talking about the triggers. There are a few considerations we had when making the triggers. We had to make sure that the length of the trigger was 6 cm or more, but at the same time, we had to make sure that the trigger was short enough so that it would not get caught when depositing the blue cube and the victims. Lastly, we made the trigger such that the alive or dead victims will slide down the storage channel. We will now talk about programming. The main task for this challenge is line tracking, which I will now talk about. What we did was to calibrate the sensor value from 0 to 10. When the color sensor sees the same color, they would give different values. 
before we did calibration, the robot could not cross the line gap because the robot would turn. How did we fix this? First, we went to the field and got the red, green, and blue values on white, which is the maximum value, and black, which is the minimum value. When taking the sensor value, we subtract the minimum value from the current value the robot was reading. After that, we took the current values and divided it by the maximum value minus the minimum value. The final calibrated value would be between 1 and 0. This allowed the robot to cross the gap. For proportional line tracking, the left color sensor minus the right color sensor value tells us how far the robot is from the line. The further the robot is, the faster we turn, until the values are equal. When they are equal, the robot moves straight. We adjusted the maximum turning speed, which happens when the robot is furthest from the line, so that the robot can cross the sharp bends. Next, we'll be talking about the green squares. We managed to detect the green squares by using error, which is the difference between the current values and the green square value. We added the red, green, and blue error to find the total error. Then we overshoot the line and find an angle until the robot detects black. The direction that it will turn depends on the direction of the green squares. It will continue to make more green squares along the course. Now, I will talk about blue cube detection. We get percentage blue by dividing blue with RGB. When we detect the blue cube, we open the claws, move forward, and push the cube forward to make sure that the distance between the cube and the sensor is consistent. We do the same thing with the red line using percentage instead. We, we need to detect the silver strip to start the evacuation zone code. Since the silver strip is more reflective, we can detect it by checking that the red, green, and blue values that the robot is reading is higher than the values for white. The white values is already stored in a list which we are using for calibration function. For the evacuation zone, we track around the walls twice. The first time is to find the evacuation point, and the second time is to exit the evacuation zone. When the robot reaches 30 cm from the wall, we move to where the evacuation point is supposed to be. If it is there, the, the laser sensor will get a low reading. We then deposit the balls and cube. If it is not there, the robot will return to where it stopped wall tracking and continue. The robot is also able to track when there is an opening in the wall. We do this by moving forward when the laser distance receives a high value instead of turning. This allows us to detect the exit. In the future, we plan to spiral in the middle of the evacuation zone so that we can pick up more balls. We will do this by tracking further and further from the walls. While wall tracking, we are also checking the middle color sensor. If there is no ball detected, the sensor will sense zero. If something is detected, we will move closer to make sure that the distance between the ball and the sensor is consistent. This is also what we are using for the blue cube. If the black ball is detected, we sort it into the empty storage. If the silver ball is detected, we sort it with the blue cube. To do this, this Grab and lift mechanism deposits the cube on the platform and the sorting mechanism locks it to one side. This is our flow chart for the whole run. First, we import our modules. Next, we create the objects. After that, we create variables, calibrate the sensors, create functions, and update sensors. If the robot sees the black line, often meaning there is the intersection, it will reverse by a little to in order to check for green cubes. When checking for green cubes, there will be four cases. No green, left green, right green, and double green. If there's no green, it will double track, continue line tracking. If there is right, if there is right green, the robot will turn right. If there's left green, the robot will turn left. Finally, if there is double green, the robot will U-turn. While the robot is double tracking, it may see an obstacle or blue cube in front of it. If there is an obstacle in front, it will move back by a little bit and track around the obstacle until both sensors see black. If there is a blue cube in front of it, the grab and lift mechanism will pick up the cube. And the sorting mechanism will sort it to one of the storage channels. If the robot detects silver line, 
it will move forward as we are now running the evacuation zone code. Before we start wall tracking, we have to check the distance the robot is away from the wall. If the robot's color sensor sees a red line, it will finish the code. When the robot detects a silver line, it will start the evacuation zone code and enter the evacuation zone. If the distance from the wall is more than 15 cm, it will move to the wall, turn, and start wall tracking. If it is less than 15 cm, it will skip straight to wall tracking. While it is wall tracking, it may detect something in front of the sensor. If the robot detects a silver ball, which is a live victim, the grab and lift mechanism will pick it up and the sorting mechanism will sort it with the blue cube in the storage channel. If the robot detects a black ball, which is a dead victim, the same process will happen, but the sorting mechanism will sort it to the other storage channel. While it is wall tracking, it may come across a collection point. It will sense the point with the front facing call sensor. If there is a collection point, it will check if the collection point if is red or green. If the collection point is red, it will deposit the dead victims. If it is green, it will deposit the blue cube and the live victims. After that, it will move on with the wall tracking. If there is no collection point, it will skip the whole step and move on with wall tracking. This process will repeat four more times. Once the first loop around the evacuation point is over, we circle it one last time to find the exit. When it finds the exit, it will turn to face it and move straight until it detects the black line. The evacuation zone code will end and the robot will exit the evacuation zone fully. Then it will continue line tracking. This brings us to the end of our presentation. Thank you.